What's up, peers, and welcome to the reading of the Optech newsletter today, number 21, on November 13th, 2018. This week's newsletter summarizes a few discussions on the Lightning Dev mailing list, suggests an opportunity to develop a new tool some users could find helpful, and provides summaries and links to some of the talks at the recent Chaincode Lightning Applications residency. Several notable code changes in popular Bitcoin infrastructure projects are also described. Action items, none this week, just toddle your Bitcoin. News, Lightning Network Developer Summit and mailing list activity before, during, and after a planned meeting among Lightning Network protocol developers, the Lightning Dev mailing list saw a surge of new proposals and discussions about earlier proposals. Below are some highlights. Advertising node liquidity. Lisa Nigut proposed allowing Lightning nodes advertise that they're willing to provide incoming capacity in exchange for a certain level of fees. Merchants need their payment channels to have incoming capacity in order to be able to receive secure off-chain payments from customers. The current alternative are either require some of their customers to wait for several on-chain confirmations to open a new channel or making manual channeling liquidity arrangements with other merchants. Although solving this problem would be highly advantageous for merchant adoption of Lightning Network, it does propose some technical challenges that discussion participants attempt to solve, both in the threat and in a related threat. Making path probing more convenient. Anthony Town proposed a method for allowing all the nodes allowing along a path to forget about a small value payment if one of the nodes on the path is offline. This reduces the resource requirements in the case of a routing failure by a node that proactively probes its available payment path to determine which are the fastest and most reliable for sending payments. Opportunity available for providing utility functions outside of Bitcoin Core. Bitcoin Core's RPC interface currently provides over 100 methods, and these are often proposals to add even more for utility functions that do not require access to the internal state of the node or wallet. During last week's developer IRC meeting, members of the project reaffirmed their commitment to not provide any new utility functions for things that can just as easily be done outside Bitcoin Core and that are unrelated to normal user workload. This will help keep the project focused on the main objectives. This does provide a nice opportunity for independent developers or other third parties to create a separate project for library, local programs, or RPC interfaces that provide a stable interface to utility functions that work well in conjunction with Bitcoin Core. And with perhaps even more provides some of the utility functions that Bitcoin Core already supports for users not running a node. Some ideas for how to implement such a tool were discussed both during and after the meeting. Lightning application residency videos. As reported previously in News Lambert number 19, Chaincode Labs recently hosted a five-day residency program for developing applications on the Lightning Network, including presentations from experts in the space. Videos of the presentation and resident demos have now been posted online, along with the slide decks for the expert presentations. The following talks may be of particular interest to members. The Lightning Protocol and Application Developer's Perspective by Alex Brosworth, infrastructure lead at the Lightning Labs, gives a comprehensive overview of the Lightning Network Protocol, explains all of the bolts and how they are relevant for developers building on top of the protocol. This talk should be useful for any developer wanting to integrate Lightning Network into products or services. Lightning Network is kind of Bitcoin? Christian Decker, core tech engineer at Blockstream, describes the similarities and differences between Bitcoin and Lightning Network payments, highlighting where on-chain transactions are more appropriate than off-chain transactions and vice versa.
He finishes with a summary of enhancements that may be pro proposed at the November 2018 Lightning Protocol meeting. Integrating Lightning Network into Bit Refill by Justin Camara, Camarena. Infrastructure engineer at BitRefill explains how BitRefill integrated Lightning payments into their store. BitRefill was one of the first Bitcoin merchants to start accepting mainnet Lightning Network payments. And Justin shows how they integrate Lightning into their infrastructure and the challenges they met and overcame along the way. For those interested in a high-level overview of BitRefill's experience with Lightning Network, the talk by Sergey Kotilar at Building on Bitcoin, covered in Newsletter 3, will also be of interest. SAP, UX Design and Product Approach by Jack Mallers, founder of SAP, explains his approach to product design and user experience. Lightning can potentially solve a lot of user experience issues associated with using Bitcoin, but also brings up some user experience challenges on its own. Jack explains how he thinks about user experience with SAP, the UX challenges, he is faced building the product and how he solved them. Notable code changes. Notable code changes this week in Bitcoin Core, LD, and C Lightning, and Lipsec 256K1. A Bitcoin Core merge adds the is change field to the get address info RPC, indicating whether the wallet uses this address in a change output. Bitcoin Core Merge makes configura configuratable the maximum number of messages the 0MQ interface will queue for a client. The default high watermark allows up to a thousand messages to be queued before some messages are dropped. A new high watermark may, choose by, may be chosen by setting one of the following configuration options to the desired maximum number of queued messages, or the maximum queue size will be made unlimited by setting it to zero. ZMQ PubHash TX HWM, CMQ PubHash Block HWM, ZMQ Pub Raw Block HWM, and ZMQ Pub Raw TX HWM. The greater the queue size, the more memory the program will use. LND Merge adds number inactive channels fields in the Get Info RPC with the number of the nodes inactive channels, similar to the existing counts of pending and active channels. LND merge adds a pub key field to the send route RPC so that LND does not need to get the pub key from an external source. This allows routing payments through private channels that are not listed on the public network. Peers, subscribe to the Bitcoin Optech newsletters and receive this and much more information every week right into your inbox. As usual, thank you very much to the amazing contributors to this open source process. And peers, see you on the next show. Bye-bye.